So I'm excited to say that I built a climbing wall in my garage. Uh, the story being, we, we bought a house this summer and we got a garage. It's really nice to have our own climbing wall. Here it is, all said and done. Check out the wall. The material cost to build our little wall, which is eight feet by nine and a half feet tall, uh, was $360 before the holds. Uh, so one thing that I thought worked really well was to physically model the wall before we made it. Uh, we did that using tape, so I <laughs> mocked it up with tape uh, in the garage, and it was really nice to get a feel for how big it was going to be. Uh, I really liked the wall that was at 30 degrees. It seemed hard, but not impossible. <laughs> uh, so we picked that one. To get some more clearance in there, we switched up the design from these sort of cross beams to a scissor truss, which is a pretty cool design. So what we did is we removed the beams as they were, and then put in these scissor trusses. The roof's pretty stable, so we can do it one at a time without being too worried. Uh, we also doubled up the wall studs to make sure the wall itself around uh, the climbing wall was really sturdy. Uh, once you start framing it up, I strongly recommend two by sixes. Those worked really well. Another friend who's an engineer said definitely go with two by sixes. It's maybe an extra five dollars. Would you climb on this? After you. I mean, I don't know about those. Those joints are a little suspect. We spaced those at 18 inches, but that was dictated by the trusses because they, they hung on the trusses. Locked it in with some screws, and then the next step is blocking. So you add two by six pieces in between all of your studs, uh, which help tie it all together and make it more sturdy. Then uh, a good piece of advice from Dave McLeod is to try and make it an inviting environment. Jenna cranked out this really beautiful tessellated pattern onto the panels before we put them up. But first, I gotta put all the T nuts in. So I gotta put all the, these nuts go into the wall so that you can screw the holes in. Uh, we put in T nuts every four inches and I managed to score some screw in T nuts, the industrial T nuts that they use at climbing gyms. put in screws every 10 inches and uh, felt really good about that. Uh, and then we also added this footer on the okay, bottom. So this is the spacer. It's space to this edge. Uh, makes it comfortable for sit starts and uh, helps you have like a little hangout area on the bottom if you're doing circuits and you're coming back down to the feet. So it's always possible to add more to your wall. There's a lot that I can do, maybe adding a wall to the right or somewhere else, but you know, I added this top little 15 more inches above the eight foot tall uh, piece of plywood. It feels like you get above nine feet and it, you're, you're actually climbing. You're not just kind of piddling around. So um, Dave McLeod recommends making sure that your wall is difficult, uh, keeps you engaged. He also recommends heat and light, uh, which are coming next. I don't have those right now, uh, but you definitely want it to be a pleasant experience. So overall, I'm really happy with this and I'm excited uh, to get in some, some winter training. It goes all the way up, all the way up. Terrific. Now let's climb on it.